Good morning, everybody. It's Sandy Kamen Wisniewski, and I am with Animal Education and Rescue. And I am so glad to be with you this Saturday morning on a mild day. It's chilly and cold here in the Midwest, but it is not freezing cold and it is not snowing at the moment. So I am a happy girl. So I'm going to wait a few minutes and see who comes on board. And we are going to talk all about dog behavior and dog communication, dog training, and so forth. So I am looking forward to an interesting discussion today. I see that Bill is on. Hi, Bill. And we'll see who else comes on. It is Saturday morning. Sometimes that's a tough time to get people to tune in, but that's the time I had available. So hopefully we'll get some people, some people uh, coming on and, and we'll see what we can do to help educate people. Hi, Bill. Good morning. Glad you're here. Let's see who else comes on. And in the meantime, I'm going to look at my notes real quick. I just wrote down a few notes about what I'm going to talk about. And while we're waiting, I want to mention also that this weekend we have a very busy weekend for Animal Education and Rescue. And right after this, that's why I do the live at 9.15 to 10.15 for the dog behavior and training, because at 11 o'clock we have an adoption meet and greet over at Pet Supplies Plus in Libertyville, which is right by the Jewel Foods on Milwaukee Avenue. So come and visit us from 11 to 2 today. We're only going to have a few animals there, but they're cute as can be and would love to get some attention. And please spread the word and have people come and see us today, 11 to 2 over at Pet Supplies Plus. I'll also mention that tomorrow we have meditation with dogs and that is from 9 to 10 a.m over at mom and pup which is a pet store in grays lake on route 120 which is belvedere road right by the jewel foods there seems to be a theme with the jewel foods doesn't there so let's see we only have a couple people on hi chuck chuck is on and let's wait just a minute more and then I'm gonna get started. And for those of you that are not catching this live, you might be seeing this later today or over the weekend or next week or something like that. I hope that this provides you some interesting insight and information. So I'm gonna kick it off now and just get started. And I'm gonna talk about a dog that we went to see over at animal control yesterday. And I just thought that that would be a good way to springboard this conversation about dog and dog behavior. So in the rescue world, it is really challenging when a dog is stressed out or when they've been misplaced, meaning that they've left their home that they lived in, whether they were found on the streets or whether they were given up by their owners to animal control or they've been bounced around from house to house. These dogs, unfortunately, are stressed out. And even the best temperament dogs can be stressed out by being uprooted because by and large dogs are pack animals and they really function the best and feel most comfortable in a pack atmosphere and with dogs the pack is their human pack sometimes there's other dogs involved or there's cats or even there's other critters that are involved but their primary function with us here on earth is to be our companions and they have been domesticated for years and years and years and years and years and years long 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 time and so they really rely on us to be their family and to get guidance and to get comfort and to get shelter and to get food and everything else so when an animal's uprooted you're going to see all sorts of behavior that isn't typical for that particular dog but it's acting out in a certain way because of 
being uprooted. So case in point, there is a dog over at Animal Control that is showing really obnoxious signs of aggression. So it's a little dog, a little white fluffy dog, and cute as a button, but you get anywhere near its kennel and it lunges at the kennel door, barking, 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 and if you put your hand near the cage, it tries to bite you. And so it's very, it's resource guarding its kennel. It's also resource guarding its food that's in the kennel. So when it's being fed, it's kind of guarding its food or standing near or barking at people when it gets near them when, when he has his food. He also is hyper reactive when he's on leash and out of his kennel when somebody walks by that he doesn't know he will bark 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 and then he'll kind of lunge at them and snap at them at their heels so this is one dog that ex is expressing very assertive dominant behavior but this is the thing is that and this is what makes it so challenging for animal wardens and animal shelters throughout the United States and throughout the world is being able to properly evaluate a dog in a setting like that. Because not all dogs will behave the same. And this dog, I have a gut feeling, is just stressed out and just acting obnoxious. Maybe it never had any rules or guidance before in its previous owner pre previous home and it's stressed out now and it has it isn't getting the proper exercise understandably because it's in a shelter environment right now and it doesn't have stability because it's in a shelter environment right now so there's all of these variables that is causing this dog to behave the way that it's behaving and so what happens to this dog is that it makes it challenging to adopt the dog out. Well, certainly this is an animal control facility, so they are not an adoption facility. So this animal needs to be, this dog needs to be transferred to an actual shelter where, or into a foster-based rescue where it's going to be able to then go up for adoption. But if this dog ends up going into a shelter environment, it's going to exhibit that same behavior and think about it. Let's say there's, a hundred dogs in a, let's say it goes to a shelter in the area and there's a hundred dogs in this shelter and they're all in dog runs and people from the general public are walking down the aisles looking at all the dogs and they see this cute little fluffy dog and they say, oh, cute little fluffy dog. Oh, I love you. And they go up to the cage and they peer in and the dog goes rah, 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 like that and jumps and lunges at them through the cage. Well, that dog is not going to be very adaptable in that atmosphere. So in an ideal world, that dog needs to be in a foster home. But now you're talking about a dog that is behaving inappropriately in a shelter environment and the unknown of how is it going to behave in a home environment as it settles in. And nine out of 10 times, any dog that comes into a home, regardless of how they're behaving in a shelter environment, there is going to be a period of at least two weeks where the dog begins to unpack its bags. So that's where you might see some behavior issues that are challenging. You may notice that the dog is fearful or the dog is withdrawn or the dog is super hyper or the dog is acting aggressive, you know, all different kinds of things. I've seen it all. And you just have to understand that it takes time for that animal to decompress, to feel a sense of safety, a sense of commitment from its caretakers, a sense of structure so that it can feel like it can be safe where, where he or she is. And so then you're going to start seeing some positive changes in the dog. But it, I always say that it's like a bell curve. So a dog will go into a situation like, for instance, this dog that's at the shelter at the animal control facility, that dog already, let's say it came in and the first, I don't know, couple hours, the dog was acting normal and the 
kennel environment. And then it started getting worse and worse and worse and worse, and the dog more and more aggressive and obnoxious and snippy and snarly. And then here it's at the top of the bell curve. And so now you're like at a situation where the dog is acting at its worst. And now we don't know that, but I'm just saying that let's just assume that that's the case. So right now it's at its worst. So somebody needs to see the value in that dog and they, they have to have the hope and the projected foresight that that dog is going to continue start to get better through structure through consistency through exercise through rules through love all of that then you're going to start seeing that bell curve go down back on the other side and then even keel out and then the dog ends up you know a, a well-rounded dog and it ends up getting adopted so that's the hope is that that's what happens. So any new dog that comes into a house, people have to understand to some extent there's going to be a bell curve. In the case of this little white fluffy dog, it's a large bell curve. Where other dogs, it could be just kind of smooth sailing. Maybe a little, maybe the dog has an accident in the house when it's still trying to figure out where inside outside is, or maybe it chews a shoe, and that's the extent of the bell curve. And then it gets better, learns the rules, gets better. So people have to understand that when they meet a dog, especially in a shelter environment, that what they're seeing is not necessarily what they're going to see when the dog is comfortable. And what the hope is, 9 out of 10 times, and I've seen it 9 out of 10 times, the dog ends up getting better and better over time. And people that adopt need to be patient and they need to understand that it can take weeks, sometimes months, for a dog to settle in, unpack their bags, and adjust to a new home. So that's really, really important to know. Now, a side note to that is that there is a portion of dogs that have certain behavior issues that are not solvable. And so they need to be managed by whoever the caretaker is. For example, you might have a dog that is not good with other dogs. And the only way to know that that dog isn't good with all other dogs is to introduce that dog to all other dogs, which is obviously com completely unrealistic. You unfortunately can't have the or don't have the ability to do that number one and even to introduce a dog to let's say five six seven eight ten dogs is nearly impossible you could have a dog that is actually just not good with big male dogs or you could have a dog that doesn't like little white fluffy dogs or you could have a dog that doesn't like all dogs you could have a dog that doesn't like just female dogs. Uh, whatever it is, there's no way to know absolutely for sure that a dog doesn't like all dogs. Because interestingly, is you could have a dog that's lit, you could have two dogs in your home, and you could say to yourself and to everybody you know, my dog is great with other dogs. But let's just use the scenario that your dog is never around any other dogs except each other. Well, how do we know? that your dog is good with all other dogs. We don't. And certainly there are dogs that don't like Max the dog, but they're fine with Sam the dog. Maybe they don't like the dog across the street, but they like your cousin's dog who, bring, who comes over once a week and plays. So you can have a dog that just doesn't like certain dogs. And there's no rhyme or reason, but that's the way it is. So I think that's all very important to know. And that also, we also have to honor that at shelters and even through rescue groups or through humane societies like ours that are foster based, is that we can't possibly know that every dog is going to get along with every dog. It's impossible. So, because there's so many variables, size, looks, temperament, attitude of 
both dogs, of all dogs. You could have your dog in a very stressful situation, let's say. Let's say you leave town and you leave your dog in the care of Auntie Sue, and Auntie Sue has three dogs. And so your dog then is staying at Auntie Sue's house and your dog is stressed out because it's not at home. And then she has three dogs and one of the dogs is pushing your dog's buttons. So here we have a scenario that would, would be unique and maybe they get in a fight. So again, we can't judge a dog based on one particular situation or even numerous situations. We have a dog in our care named Stax who gets along with all of the dogs in the home that he lives in. He's perfectly fine. There are no issues. And he, twice outside the property, uh, one time on leash, one time he jumped the fence. This was not with us. It was when he was adopted out. And he went off the property and he bit another dog. You would never think that this dog would do this because he gets along great with the dogs that he lives with. So again, it makes it very challenging for people that work in animal rescue to properly evaluate a dog for dog aggression and dog, you know, dogs not getting along. Same with a dog not getting along with people. So we have a dog in our care right now, and if you come to our meet and greet today, her name is Phoenix. She's an absolutely adorable 10-year-old purebred beagle. And Phoenix gets along with everybody except the foster mom's son, who she gets along with okay, but she growls at him. Gets along with everybody else, but her son is very tall, big, and wears a baseball cap all the time. So here we have a scenario where the dog is getting along with everybody else, and here is this person with this persona, and it's not untypical for a dog that sees a very big, large, assume, unassuming person that, that is looming over them, that has a cap, they can't see their eyes real well, that a dog will be nervous and might be aggressive or act aggressive, but actually they're afraid when they see that person. So if that's the case, then it's evaluating that situation. Okay, is it the baseball cap? Take the baseball cap off. Is it his body language? He comes in like this, big and tall. Well, then he needs to stand sideways and he needs to not look at the dog and see if that changes the dog's behavior. So again, we have a situation where a dog typically gets along with most people, but is fearful or fear aggressive with one particular individual. So we have to take that into consideration as we move through our lives with our own dogs and with dogs that we meet that you're gonna see behavior. So again, stressing again that in shelter and foster environments is it puts extra challenges on us because we can't introduce a dog to every single person in the entire world or that it will meet in its entire life. So safety measures are really important when we're talking about that. But those of you that own dogs, it's really important to understand that you can't judge your dog by one bad choice that dog makes. There's so many variables. What's going on in the dog's life? Is, has there been changes? What, what kind of people, let's say the dog is acting inappropriately with the person. Who is that person and is there something different about them? Is your dog in pain? Like for instance, you have small children and you have an older dog and your child child that's three years old trips over and falls on your old terrier mix and the old terrier mix snaps at your child well that old terrier mix could have been startled could have been fast asleep can't hear very well and thus the kid didn't hear the kid coming up to to the dog could have arthritis back issues all sorts of health issues that that hurt the dog physically and that its reaction was to snap. So again, you can't judge a dog by one particular behavior. I think that's important to know. So I wanted to touch on that 
I think it's really, really important and to honor that with our dogs. I'm going to touch on one other thing that I think is important to talk about, and that is types of dog aggression. There are many, many types of dog aggression, and one of the misconceptions that people have is that dog, if a dog is aggressive with another dog, that it is going to be aggressive with people, and that is totally not necessarily the case. You could have a dog that is aggressive towards other dogs and be perfectly fabulous with people. It does not necessarily cross over. Aggression does not cr cross over to all aggression. You can have a dog that's a resource guarder. This is a dog, let's just use the extreme scenario, it's a dog that seriously guards its food when it eats, where even with its owner, if the owner put their hand by the bowl or anywhere in the vicinity of the dog's bowl while it was eating, the dog would lunge and snap at them. In every other way, let's say, that dog is fabulous with people and with other dogs and everything else, it's just around food. That is one type of aggression. It's resource guarded. You could have fear aggression. Fear aggression is a dog that is that you corner and that is fearful and showing all the signs of being fearful, like its tail is tucked, its ears are back, its hackles are up, it's growling, it's you know tucked in the corner, and somebody decides they're gonna try to pet the dog. That dog would be fear aggressive if it snapped, growled, whatever, at that person. There's also leash aggression. This is a dog that is misperceived as being aggressive to other dogs because Every time the owner, let's say, walks the dog on leash, the dog sees another dog and goes ballistic, lunging, barking, growling at the other dog. And so the owner comes to the conclusion that that dog is dog aggressive. Guess what? That's not necessarily the case. The dog may or may not be dog aggressive. The only way to know if that dog is dog aggressive is to have it meet a dog off leash. Well, if you have a dog that's acting that way, you certainly are leery about taking that chance of having the dog off leash. So what you do is if you want two dogs to meet and you have a dog that you are thinking is just leash aggressive, is that have the dogs meet between gates so the dog or between fences. So the dogs meet off leash between fences. And you will know almost right away, is that dog truly aggressive or is the dog just leash aggress aggressive. Now, this is another thing, is that there are a ton of dogs that are leash aggressive. It is actually quite common, and it is something that is difficult to correct. It is not easy to correct. There's different methods for training a dog that is leash aggressive, and not all methods work for all dogs. And I can't get into that today because that's like a whole other thing, but I can tell you that not every method works for every dog, and it's incredibly time consuming, and not everybody has the time or ability to do that. So sometimes people just have to live with a dog that acts leash aggressive, and sometimes they can correct it with diligent work, consistent, diligent work in correcting the behavior issue. So that would be another type of aggression. You could have a dog that is small animal aggressive, and this would be a dog that is literally fixated on, let's say, a cat, and that that dog wants to kill that cat. But ironically, that dog is perfectly fine with little dogs, big dogs, children, people of all ages. Maybe it's great with, with everything else but cats. And the only way to know that is through trial and error. And obviously not putting a cat in danger. Never, ever, ever put your cat in danger. If, you're plan if you have a cat and you're planning on getting a dog, make sure that that cat has a safe place to go that the dog cannot get to. And that should be where their food, water, and litter box is. And maybe it, they can jump the gate and the, the dog can't, or they can get in, the, in a cat door through, you know, like you cut out a cat door through a door so that the dog can't go through, but the cat can. So whatever you have to do to keep your, your dog safe. The other kind of aggression, you could have a 
dog that is aggressive towards things that move fast, like bicyclists, joggers, cars, trucks, rollerbladers, you know, anything like that. You can have a dog that acts perfectly great with everybody, but as soon as something goes by quickly, it and you have this dog on leash, it bark, 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 and lunges and tries to bite at whatever's, whatever's uh, going by quickly. That's one type of aggression. And again, that would take practice and training to get the dog over that. So again, a different kind of ag aggression. And the dog could be perfectly fine in any other way. We had a dog one time in our care that actually had a lot of different kinds of aggression. It had stranger aggression. It wasn't good with strangers. It had dog aggression with dogs it didn't know and dogs of certain sizes. It had small animal aggression. It had fast moving objects aggression. It had leash aggression. This dog had a lot of issues, a lot of issues. And so each and every aggression we tested tested positive for each one and over a period of time we were able to really chip away at it and even figure out in a safe way what how we were able able to deal with some of it and correct it and how we were not able to deal with other things and that would be an extreme situation nine out of ten dogs nine and a half out of 10 dogs are not going to have all of those types of aggression. So I wanted to touch on that as well. So I today is a small crowd. I want to see if anybody has any questions before we before I leave and get ready for my adoption event. Does anybody have any questions? Otherwise, we're going to call it a day, get done early, and that'll give me time to get ready for my adoption meet and greet. So I don't see any questions right now. So I will end by saying that I really appreciate you taking the time to come on this morning and to spend a few minutes with me. I hope that I was able to educate you a little bit, help you a little bit, give you the bigger picture. Be careful not to judge animals by one behavior, Dogs need to be evaluated carefully and over a long period of time by people that really know what they're doing. And if you have a dog in your care that has behavior issues that you are not able to handle yourself, there are trainers that will come to your home and work with you one-on-one -on -one with your dog. And that's really important, it's not a dead end. There are group classes, for people that just need basic obedience and maybe socialization for their dog. But if you have a dog with some serious behavior issues, don't go to a group class that is not gonna solve your problem. You need to have a trainer come to your home and work with you in your home. So hopefully this gave you some wonderful tips that will help you in your life as you move forward. Please, I encourage you to share this video with other people so that they too can be educated about dog behavior. And I hope to see you again real soon. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.